This is a story about reindeer. And any story about reindeer is also a story about reindeer and people. Reindeer husbandry is an ancient livelihood involving more than 20 different indigenous peoples around the Arctic. Some 100,000 people are involved in herding two and a half million reindeer across a vast region that stretches from the North Sea to the Pacific Ocean. Reindeer herders work in some of the most extreme environments on Earth in temperatures that range from minus 50 to plus 40 degrees centigrade in some of the regions that are predicted to experience the most dramatic climate change shifts on Earth. This threat of a warming planet comes at a time when reindeer pastures are increasingly being lost and fragmented as a globalized, crowded and resource-hungry world expands its search for new resources. Rising resource prices and new technologies have opened up the Arctic for extractive industries such as mining, oil and gas exploration and forestry to create additional pressures on herders, reindeer and pastures as never before. Clearly, with these coming changes, reindeer herders are facing a challenging and uncertain future which in some areas threaten the very survival of the livelihood. And I can say from many, many interviews and many, many conversations, there's no doubt that the vulnerability of the reindeer community to these changes is far exceeds anything people even begin to understand. Because there had been this one degree of stability for 10,000 years, and now we're operating way outside that band, and new things were coming along, and so we wanted to study them. And so we began with some folks from Harvard and several other places joining forces with reindeer herders and universities in the high north building a program which we now call ELOT. And ELOT has many meanings, but the most important meaning, it's all about pastures. ELOT is a word borrowed from the Sami language, which means good pastures. This is a critical term for reindeer herders and reindeer, as they depend on good pastures to survive. The word Ela is closely related to the Sami words Erlin, which means life, and Erlu, which means herd. Ela is also the name that has been given to a research project under the International Polar Year, which aims to examine this rich and complex relationship. Ela emphasizes the connection between reindeer, peoples, land, language, and knowledge and embodies the complexity of the natural world and the interaction with it of animals and people. Eilat has been organized around several themes, including climate change and future climate scenarios for reindeer herding, pasture conditions for reindeer, reindeer herders' knowledge, issues of institutions and governance, reindeer welfare and reindeer herders' education. Involving reindeer herders, scientists and institutions the Airlat project was designed and carried out from within the world of reindeer husbandry, and the project grew out of a desire to investigate whether reindeer herders were vulnerable to climate change and the effects of globalization, and whether there were tools for adaptation that reindeer herders could use in the future that engaged not only science, but also indigenous people's knowledge. What's, what's very special about the reindeer herding community and all of the herders and the animals is there's a very rich cultural setting in which all this has taken place. And we know that it's something of the order of six, seven, or 8,000 years in existence. So it's got a, a robust beginning, a robust heritage and legacy. And we can understand things in that context. Means how many bells? Means the Eikmaardusmatafuomaasia Mille stabil saamikin voi tieni maadusa ehtuja. Tämä niin kuin lamaissa ei mikään. Tällä paitsi nuppelaakka heivi hiekastan tämän riutamien jalat. 
vireyttää, no tälle saami vuokki. Ja tälle uskon hoitaa alas. Ei mahdus maittai, ko ko le saakka talkalla reutaleen. Täs tulee deuske talkalla reutamat. Tämä tandeko tahalla mukalla harjaanan. A reuta juhki tinki mihki kelle stabiila. Puure kalbo alle puures rahkana. Tässä ahde, ahde, tahkalla ka riutet. Ja kanske miel velo aina nolluan, että tuolla ei pallaan, että voi kun tiehti, että pouhti ja oi niitä jahkaa, saa sitä reutaa. Reutaa tahto koulun. Täällä kuhki kiitaa, kuhkes kiitaa, kos muohta vielä kuhka. Kuhkes tjauhtia, kos peulakes se kuhka. Ja tekkar, jo aina muhtan sain rissi, että voi kun mä oon ollut. Reindeer herders have a vast storehouse of knowledge accumulated over time that has been passed down from generation to generation. Some call this traditional knowledge, even though it is still used every day. The relationship of this knowledge to scientific knowledge has been a central question and recurrent theme in the Erlat project. Tämä niin arpeviras mahtuu muu, muu aivil meiltä. Hille tuus jo lakkaan mahtuu, millä, millä, millä lakkaan muistut. Mutta täällä mä ei takkaan millä tuolastuvun. Tjaalaa tuolastuvun. Teus isämmälläkin, kun teurehtälässä mahtuu. Mutta koske tuolastuvun. Isko juvun ja tuolastuvun. Tämä niin kuin olla tjaajahan aikki tjaalaa. Kun niillä te saadaanua. Ja, ja tälle mahtuu. No ma, mahtuu ja sieltä se lakkaan meidän kelkaa saada hiskojuvat. Ja arpevillas mahtuu saada iskä. Tälle mahtuu, tälle tuolellis mahtuu. Ja arpevillas mahtuu patotuolus erinomais, tälle huiviita. Tälle vuosi jättiin erinomais patotuolus, kun taas kohdalla läntäviin maa ilmeis, kun se kohdalla tähän reutalkalla reutamumat tutkii vai vilmeltä puhut jollain ne osit juhat, siihen ne musta juhat siitä. Tämä ei ole huijaa, että olisi paljon tuolla mahtuussa. Tässä on okta vuotta. Tämä on mahto vuotta. Tämä saattaa vasta mihtiä niitä. Mä voisin taas saattaa mihtiä niitä. Tänne ei ole aivan niin kuin reutaa, kun tuolla ei reutaa. Koska siinä reindeer herdin kommunissa on paljon 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 tähän ekoisioon. Näin paljon on paljon snow. Pertikulaisesti in the winter time. Where you might have a meter or two of snow in order to get to the lichen. The reindeer have not only to to go through it, but they have to find it, and it's clear they have a real capacity to find it, provided it's snow. And many know that indigenous languages often use many words to describe what, in say English, might be two or three words. In in Sami and Inuit and others, we're talking maybe as much as several hundred words that are used to describe the character of snow because it's such a fundamental part of the existence of the herd and its survival. And what's been happening is that as the planet gets warm, or warmer, and we know from our discussions that the Arctic is warming more rapidly elsewhere, you'll get some periods where you'll get, in what normally would be the depth, depth of a cold winter, you'll get some rain. And that's sitting on top of the snow and it forms an ice lens. And then some more snow comes on and another ice lens. And now it's virtually impossible for reindeer to get through that because I think my sense is that it's an olfactory process. They can, they can sort out the, the good lichen by some aromas. But there may be other factors of which I'm not aware. But the fact is they can find it. But the ice lens makes it difficult for them first to sense it and sometimes even to get through it because that ice lens may be very thick. No, tää on mun uh, mihti tän rinni. Ja mä ei ko Sveinin lennä, ei ko kähtseli kolme haave mihti tän sammon, no, että on jo vähän statsti, kun mä oon lossaa tällä. Tähän mä oon ollut chaat sille rinni. Inger Maria Gaup Eira is a Sami reindeer herder and linguist whose PhD is investigating Sami snow terminology 
and the unique relationship between herders, reindeer, snow and language. Traditional knowledge in reindeer husbandry takes many forms. The importance of castration for herd management has emerged as a key adaptive tool for herders in a changing climate and altered pastures. The first person to castrate the reindeer, I think that was the first reindeer herder. That's how it's been a very simple tool to really yeah. domesticate the herd or semi-domesticate the herd. And this goes through all the pan Arctic. Having the ability to castrate animals uh, makes the herd more stable to climatic change and the warming which is going on. Because it stabilizes the metabolism in the herd. If you could talk about the herd's metabolism, the energy use of the whole herd, because it calms down the whole herd in winter. If you don't have males and uh, castrates in the winter, you have to use the same amount of energy on your snowmobile to herd them. Some of the males are actually losing the velvet on the antlers. Uh -huh. They have been castrated, but not completely castrated. So they are actually moving into a kind of rut. They are building larger muscles. Right. And they are actually half castrated. You know? We really feel the time, it's, time is right for a bit of an investigation of what actually goes on in here. You know, there's, there's talk of half castrated and fully castrated animals. And, uh, we've seen some examples of half castration today with uh, two animals being bitten down on. So what we're trying to do is to um, develop a, a humane, both a humane and practical method of castrating reindeer, one that both takes into uh, uh, takes account of the animal's need for pain control during uh, castration, and also can be fitted into the into, into the herd procedure without. Really disrupting the normal maintenance of the herd and, and uh, not least and causing extra expenses for them. Uh, we will control the animals that we uh, gave injections yesterday. It's now gone 24 hours and we will start with the um, uh, group that uh, got the placebo, the uh, not included injection, and uh, we will check the condition uh, and check the injection site and um, uh, take a blood sample. This is uh, 48 hours after the second anti-gonadotropin releasing hormone injection. So we are two days after and now we are st studying the behavior of the animals to see if we can find any changes. So one side of this uh, project is that we're trying to develop, in fact, a, um, a method of castration based on immunization against the animal's natural reproductive hormones. The other side is to look at um, castration as it has been practiced in Sámi, reindeer herd maintenance. 
So that traditional castration method, chewing and biting and chewing on the testes, it, it stops sperm production but they still have testosterone production and they still get a, a large powerful animal and it keeps the herd together, keeps the females under control and uh, these animals they have an important role to play in breaking through the ice in the winter time. Getting rid of the males, getting rid of the castrates makes a more vulnerable uh, uh, rainy husbandry to the climate change. Because having more females, they produce very easy, so you heard doubles very easy. Uh -huh. But when the grazing condition gets bad, it goes like this very, very soon. Yeah. And it's very difficult to herd them. But then we have animals can be able to herd them. We have 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 to Ja är det någonting som jag inte vet att att det står att gilla vå, det är vad som går att nära mitt. Ja, då måste man ju då i bara på chaj ha det, då tuttki chaj är inte nästi. Att att på att jag har tillväl tackar gå ut och jäna mus, gå så ut och lägg ju att stora vägen gå så här, när det stora sista bakken, nu gå sami gå ut och ja, ja nu gå ner ett så gå ut och ja, men man lägger mig att stora mus gå på att då lägga ut och ja, men det är inte lika inte ha ägta. Vi har båtsdålu, en båtsdålen gåttas båtsdålu, mina det båtsdomen, det är motorer den båtsdålu. The Amal Peninsula is a 700 km finger of land that reaches into the Arctic Ocean in the far northwest of Siberia and is home to the largest area of reindeer husbandry in the world. Here, Nenets, Komi and Hanti peoples herd over 600,000 reindeer on annual migratory journeys of up to 1,000 kilometers. Families continue to migrate seasonally over the tundra lakes and rivers on routes that have been little changed for centuries. Reindeer husbandry here has managed to thrive while entire political systems and socio-economic structures have undergone immense upheaval in Russia. The Yamal region is home to some of the world's most vibrant reindeer peoples and cultures and is a region where reindeer husbandry continues to thrive and grow. Within this region lies over 20% of the world's known gas reserves and the challenges of this meeting between rapid oil and gas development and reindeer husbandry make this region an important area of investigation for the Airlock project as development here has expanded exponentially over the last decade. Rapid extraction of resources and infrastructural development has already impacted the landscape Pipelines, railways and roads now bisect reindeer migration routes on the Yamal Peninsula and the manner in which these areas for potential conflict are resolved will have a significant impact on the future of reindeer husbandry and traditional livelihoods in this region. Two Eilat PhD students have carried out intense fieldwork on the Yamal Peninsula with Nenets reindeer herding families who are partners with the Eilat project. While both work on themes of resilience, Anna Dekteva is looking at land use change and adaptation, while Ellen Ingaturi is focusing on social organization and the institutional constraints that reindeer herders operate within. One of the innovative ERLAT initiatives to address issues of climate change and loss of pastures has been the holding of collaborative workshops on the land with reindeer herders. Well, in, in a way, it's been a process of engagement of local communities. Uh, I mean, whole herding communities, uh, youth, uh, elders, uh, herders, people connected to these societies, scientists, authorities, uh, in, in a great mix-up to, to address the challenges of, of climate change. 
and uh, also lots of postures. One key aspect of the community-based workshops, uh, this, this uh, uh, approach that we've, we've chosen, is that they really represent uh, an arena where uh, scientific knowledge, uh, practical knowledge meet and get tested against each other. Uh, exchange of information, of understanding, uh, that in some uh, we see uh, increase the, the, the knowledge uh, development altogether. Maybe hinting at some answers that would not have been able to, to, to surface if each of these groups involved were to address them independently of, of each other. <laughs> Att det bara tala på det nog eller nåla projekt att jag lär mig lära mig sånt där sparko seminarer till workshop och mallet bara tala på kost bara tala på det jag vet då på kost att lära jag bara tala på det jag vet då har jag det här läs jag har inte det här läs saker ställt i tarka rätta mig hektu då det här läs det inte lägger allt om jag lär mig det inte lägger det här läs att så är nå att då har jag inte lägger bara tala på det Jeskule koulussa. Mä en merkäs, mä se enpo merkäs, jom mä kulahaa tuusille samaa vai niinko luuhta lagan. Tässä on mä itse merkäs, jom mä tää lagaanski de koulu takkara. Ja toppe, ei lähe nukalle konsepta, mä toppe, mä fönkeerit. Tässä ei lähe nuustuora raaji, kun mitu aivu, nuustuora viittis raaji, kun mitu aivu. Tää saattaa pillistit, vaata tuolla. Täällä huite hälas. Oukkoskuuluja, mutta tietysti sisäkuuluja, niin mä huitin hänellä, vaat olla muille veilasua teivälit ja, ja, ja faakalatset kuorahalla, että he etsivät vaattia suolta ja huomaa siitä. Tai, tai niin kuin se mä johapuu. Oh, puolta se mä mihin vaan saa uhki, etsivät me servolla kaihin nannemiin. Mun ahitmiidi mun mihin, etsivät saat valti huutus vastausamaihin ja etsivät mieltä nannemiin. Puolella lakka dillai. Ahoive eerahkalikit, eerahkalikit, joutosi pukti, mille huipahaa, että manna, että paitsi jämpö vahaa katahka, kun on minun mulle lyhtyi dillii. Ja niin kuin jäi kelan tihtä, että olet mulle, olet mulle, hei haali. Päätämme, että näissä asociaatioissa stalla prioriteettinen uutisessa tämän projektin ja provedenia семинаров на местах в Оленевских регионах. И в том числе несколько семинаров были проведены в Республике Саха-Якутия при поддержке правительства Республики Саха-Якутия, при поддержке местных органов власти. Мы сумели провести в 2008 году семинар, ЭАЛАТ-семинар, посвященный сохранению традиционных знаний оленеводов в селе Тополинное Тампонского района, в котором живут оленеводы Вены. Вот. Этот семинар проходил во время празднования Дня оленевода и был таким очень ярким, интересным событием, где оленеводы смогли собраться вместе и обсудить наиболее животрепещие, так скажем, проблемы оленеводства, задуматься над тем, какие сегодня происходят изменения в климате этого региона и каким образом оленеводы могут адаптироваться в будущем к этим изменениям. Затем в 2009 году, а также в 2008 году в селе Хатыстыр Алданского района был проведен семинар в оленеводческой бригаде Большой Немныр. Мы тогда совместно с Международным центром оленеводства и Ассоциацией оленевода мира провели этот небольшой семинар сначала в селе Хадыстыра, а затем в Большом Немныре, вот, где мы имели возможность пообщаться с оленеводами непосредственно на месте их работы в оленеводческой бригаде. Несколько дней мы провели в этой бригаде и были очень интересные дискуссии, очень интересные э, вопросы, которые мы сумели обсудить. И э, это было таким неким началом нашего сотрудничества в Южной Якутии, потому что 
также одним из приоритетных направлений деятельности нашей ассоциации является сохранение таежного оленеводства. Основными результатами вот этих семинаров, которые мы провели в Якутии, стало то, что, во-первых, мы привлекли внимание к тем вопросам, которые требуют сегодня скорейшего решения. И мы привлекли самих оленеводов к тому, чтобы они задумались, что будет происходить с оленеводством в ближайшее время и в перспективе. То есть сами оленеводы смогли вместе собраться и друг с другом обсудить, что нас ждет, какие сегодня у нас есть проблемы и что мы можем сделать для того, чтобы изменить ситуацию. И если даже мы не можем изменить в случае с климатическими изменениями, то как мы можем адаптироваться к этим изменениям. Вот. И главным, на мой взгляд, результатом стало то, что сами оленеводы они изменились после этих семинаров. Они стали задумываться, они стали больше обсуждать, больше предлагать каких-то новых решений. И можно даже сказать, что люди воспрянули духом, что, может быть, в наших силах изменить ситуацию сегодня к лучшему. Чукотка, in the far east of the Eurasian landmass, is one of Russia's great regions of reindeer husbandry. The region is slowly recovering after a turbulent 1990s when the entire economy went into freefall after the collapse of the Soviet Union. However, Thanks to the benevolence of Roman Abramovich, Chukotka's wealthy governor for over a decade, the region has recovered and stabilized. Selected rural villages and livelihoods have been reconstructed, and reindeer husbandry has been a direct beneficiary of this support. As a result, numbers of reindeer and herders have again started to recover. Chukotka is subject to extreme temperature variations, and this may intensify in the future as a result of climate change. Some parts of Chukotka are among the world's most challenging for the practice of reindeer husbandry. Ну и конечно, оленеводы всего мира тоже не могли не принять участие вот в этой мировой дискуссии по этим проблемам, потому что оленеводство напрямую связано с погодой, с погодными явлениями, с климатическими явлениями, потому что оно проводится, люди работают в тундре, в тайге, на открытом воздухе, то есть непосредственно связаны с природой. И, конечно, вот эти глобальные, может быть, катастрофические явления природы, которые ученые нам прогнозируют, они не могут не волновать Ayalat seminars were held in the town of Anadir and the small village of Kanchalan, where elders, youth, herders and scientists met in the local school hall. A group of Chukchi Evan and Sami herders then travelled overland to visit Chukchi herders on the tundra. En route, pasture conditions were examined and discussed with elder herders and the herd was finally located. Oh, that is a very good pasture. И очень важно нам было собрать мнение ученых, оленеводов, прежде всего оленеводов, которые проработали всю жизнь в оленеводстве, собрать мнение нынешних чиновников, которые управляют в той или иной мере оленеводством или другими связанными с оленеводством отраслями хозяйства. Discussions were held on the importance of traditional knowledge, climate change, challenges to the maintenance of the livelihood, the difficulties of attracting and keeping youth engaged in reindeer husbandry, herd selection, and traditional reindeer slaughtering methods. There was a recognized need to initiate a program for the long-term monitoring of reindeer pastures in Chukotka. As with all reindeer peoples, the color composition of the reindeer herd is not arrived at by accident but it's the result of careful breeding choices and a deep knowledge of animals and nature and their interaction over time. Over the generations, the Chukchi have developed a reindeer suited to the climatic conditions of Chukotka. They call this reindeer Hargin, 
which literally means dark. They are powerfully built animals and uniquely adapted to the pastures and climate of the region. So that not only is it important for the reindeer herding community itself to be able to survive better, react to, and have new tools to help them in the future, um, we also, also can use that to help other communities who are going to face challenges. It'll be different. If it won't be snow, it'll be something else that will be the barrier that the change. And it's why we really have to understand this business of adaptation, because the planet will be warmer. There will be major change in precipitation. There will be major change in wind patterns, and there'll be major change in oceanic circulation, all of which will change the whole character of the entire planet. So it won't be just about sea level rise or just about the loss of biodiversity. It'll be changes in the very fundamental interrelationship between humans, plants, animals, and what I'll just call the other parts of the natural planetary system. The International Polar Year, by facilitating uh, this project uh, altogether, has been of major importance for reindeer herding communities. And we may not see that clearly now, but to address these changes you have to start early as we believe they will be very profound in the next 50 to 100 years. At the same time we, we've also been able to, through this work, establish a network uh, across the Arctic really, uh, that is also going to be continued within the framework of University of the Arctic. Uh, we have established and got an endorsement for uh, uh, a University of the Arctic Eyalat Institute for Circumpolar Reindeer Husbandry to address the knowledge challenges of reindeer husbandry. Uh, and that links to research, education, training, information, outreach, the whole spectrum of, of activities. Uh, that we, we see uh, s such a clear need for in the future. I think that the Octi Puat is the Paroku, the Paroku, the Paroku, the Sikke, the Tietu, 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 Rahkalit empo i maatossa, siis kui olkus kuului ja emial muki servoda ka sisaa kuului. Ahte min tiiäh tule annules, tan ferehti ja pervevalti vuhti, mihaali, et ei see valtik ja servoda hi, mida tan. Ahte kui meerri tuvu ja kui juttus juba pohtaikki perra. Te ferehti valti vuhti ja näh auhkin, Puhut tämän tiedon, millä tämän ratsin pajas tuolla tai servoilla, koska tämän tahtoisessa puhutsu tuolla. Just tämän itäkään te juokka lahpu ja te saattaa, kun juokka huipaha tahtoivat. No te elä prosjehtä, valto puhutus lää ja mun jahkan sattaa, että tämä Toivaka pohtaikki. Tänä tammi tuoda ei tarpeeksi maille mereuta. Thank <laughs> you.